We found a Destro Warlock who won four rounds in their solo shuffle, but was making so many mistakes, including using a Voidwalker of all things. We knew something had to be done before things got out of hand, so we called up Galubaba to give this Warlock some much needed advice. He knows firsthand what it's like to play under pressure against Devil Melee, and with years of tournament experience and multiple rank 1 titles, we knew he was the man for the job. Today, Gelu will give some tips on how to damage, kite, and set up kills while getting trained as a Warlock. For more tips, be sure to check out our updated Destro Warlock course, which can only be found at skillcap.com. There, you can learn how to deal rank 1 level damage in Season 2, and see more commentaries from Gelu as he guides you step by step through difficult arena matchups. All of this and more is why Skillcap is the only place that guarantees you will gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. So if you want to hit your goals this season, be sure to check out the links below. Anyway, let's start the review. All right, so let's get into this first game then. So first things first, I immediately see that he's playing the Void Walker. Now that is not ideal. This is incredibly defensive. Um, it could be okay if you're facing maybe a sub rogue or something, and you just want to get that big last stand in the opener for a huge health stone. But when you're playing solo shuffle, you just want to want to just win the game. It's not too great. Personally, if I was placing this composition, the double melee healer, I would go for maybe a succubus just so that you can CC the healer while you're getting railed by the two melees. Uh, I also noticed that he's playing with Owl Havoc. He's playing with the uh, the proc, I think. Proc Bane, maybe. Which is pretty last season tech. I don't think that's very good anymore. Havoc would be great here since you can just double coil the DPS uh, with that succubus on the healer. And it would allow you to just get immolate onto both targets and Actually, I use a lot less globals. We are using the Soul Rip, though. So you can see that there on the bars. That's good. Uh, for Last Talent, I'm not sure what he's playing for the Last Talent. I would assume Big Gate. I would play Big Gate into this. But uh, I guess we'll find out during the game. So I see a first mistake immediately. I would put down my gateway here. I put my portal here and just gateway from the door, because this warrior could just leap on top of us and just completely annihilate us instantly. So this is not the most ideal positioning for a portal. And yeah, he goes here. I don't like this. this. This is not using the map at all. You could use the map to go up and down. Instead, we're using the map to... Uh, the gate just goes directly forward, so the, the DPS can reconnect instantly on top of him, and this, this portal is not too great either. I would definitely go up or have it in the room, as I said. And we're, look, we're playing Rain of Fire. Okay. So Rain of Fire is okay to play. It's not terrible. I play it sometimes in my pet build or I'm playing into a rogue or something. However, the way he's using it is wrong. You want to be Rain of Firing before you enter combat. This will allow you to get your shards back and stack your uh, Ritual of Ruin at the same time. That's kind of the main point of Rain of Fire, in my opinion, is just stacking that up with the opener, but we just go in, press Rain of Fire, and now we have no shards. So, <laughs> it's not ideal. Uh, okay, so we go for a Fear here on the DK. I'd really like to see an Immolate after the Sphere, so we can get our shards back, but we're not doing that. We go for a Dark Pact. This is a good Dark Pact. Nice reactions. I want to be trying to get some damage out here. So we have this instant Incinerate prop that we're just not using. He waddled to our gateway, but as we said, our gateway is not too great. He just grips us back. Get a good portal down though, using that uh, soul burn sprint. That's good. Now here, th this is just wasted globals, right? We need to just be using immolate on something. Even just immolate the pets, because you have literally no shards. So the game is very difficult to play. It just needs to really immolate anything. Get curse on anything. So we go for infernal stun here into a shadow fury. Not too bad. And we go for our portals into our double con flag. Now, I don't love this double con flag either. Um, we don't have the eradication buff from Shadow Burn. You kind of want to Shadow Burn first. So that all your portals are doing 10% more damage. Your con flag's doing 10% more damage. But instead we just do double con flag, which means that we're not getting the damage bonus from it either. On uh, our immolates and incinerates, but it doesn't seem that we're using immolates or incinerates anyway. We have this instant incinerate and we finally use it here. I'm going for a Chaos Bolt fakes, which I don't really want to be doing that. Now we run five shards, so we want to just be chucking out our Rain of Fire here, or our Shadow Burns. We're just sitting on shards a very, very long time. We get a Snare up 
onto the warrior, but he's very close to us anyway. Okay, we finally got an immolate up. This is good. Now we've got immolate up. We use his uh, rain of fire. That's good. We use our shadow burn. That's also good. And we teleport away. Okay, not too bad. Okay, so here we go for a fear onto the healer. We'd really like to see a tongues on him there as well. We go for our shadow burns onto the warrior. But it's just not using Immolate at all. It's the biggest concern for me here. It's uh, really not making the most of our Ashen Remains, but looks like the warrior is dying anyway. We go for a fear, we get kicked. Now it looks like the other team doesn't have any interrupts at this point, so we should be able to cast something. But no, we can't. And at this point, I would definitely swap away from the Voidwalker, right? Because we've already used his um, ability from the Voidwalker being sacked. I mean, it's coming back up now, but you, you've essentially had a minute of having no useful pair. You can see the healer is actually casting to heal. So if you re-summoned this to a CS pet at some point, you could have easily scored out the win already, I think. Here we go for an Immolate. Good. We get that proc uh, Havoc. We go for a Shadow Fury, but everyone these Blade Stormings so we do too much. Go for Incinerate. Get kicked on that. Now here we should just start casting Chaos Bolt immediately. Because uh you kicked, right? And the warrior's too far away. I would just target the priest and just chaos bolt him. Or just fear or something. But ah, uh, and the warrior goes down to that. Well, I mean, this game was uh I mean we did win this game. However, really need to focus on immolating a bit more. It's some good kiting, but we should use the map better as well. Just we should go up and down, just teleporting up and down, which will allow us to free cast. And we need to make sure that our Reign of Fires are used either when we're at full shards we can't cast, and in the beginning of the game, so that we can get our shards back after we press it. Alright, let's get into the second game. So once again, we're sacking the Voidwalker, and it doesn't look like we're changing talents, so we're going to be playing with the Soul Rip, Proc, Bane of Havoc, and the Mystery Talent, but I still haven't figured out what it is yet. But uh, maybe bombs, but yeah. We, we go here for this gateway, which as I said earlier, I'm not a big fan. I'd like this gateway to go up, or maybe have this port a little bit further away. And now we go in for a Reign of Fire, which unfortunately this Reign of Fire is, once again, when he's already in combat, so he's not going to be getting those shards back. But after this, we get a good global, we get our Immolation down. So this will allow us to generate shards back. Let me proc a Bane of Havoc. Now, this is why I don't like, love Bane of Havoc. It's it's very RNG, and it doesn't proc very often now. So, if he was playing regular Havoc, we could have just used it to double core the DPS and get two emulates up. But as it is, it just propped at a very poor time for us, and we weren't able to get much from it. So, following this, we go for a single coil, which I guess in the scenario isn't too bad because we don't have Havoc. So he just goes for that to reduce some pressure on himself, which isn't too bad. So he uses Dark Pact as well at high health, which is also good. You should always be looking to use Dark Pact while you are max health for the maximum shield. And he gateways away, so it's very good. And then teleports back after the warrior chases him. So this is some very good kiting here. Following this, he does two globals on Immolate. This is very strong. This will allow him to get his shards back, as I said previously. And he gets his flashpoint stacks up, and he gets a uh, Bane of Havoc. So from this Bane of Havoc, we should be able to get quite a lot of damage out by using our Conflags, maybe our Shadow Burn, and we have an Instant Incinerate. So we go for the Shadow Burns, go for the Conflag, but we don't seem to be using our uh, Backdraft procs enough. You see down here on the bottom on number two, he has his uh, Instant Incinerate up quite frequently, and he doesn't use it. It actually refreshes before it goes off, so definitely need to be trying to use those more often. You get a good fear onto the healer. That's good being able to find this uh, these small areas where you can get crowd control. And now he goes for another fear here. Now, what he's done here is actually quite good. However, the timing that he's done it is not ideal. Now he's gone for the, the infernal stun into double stun on the DPS, which allows him to free cast, right? But unfortunately, he's done this when the priest is already feared here. So his fear already lands on the priest, but it's only about one second. So this scenario it could have been really, really strong turns into uh, not a lot of pressure. It, it could have forced a lot. And just to get Guardian from this regardless though. So here he's just running away from his portal. That's very good. Gets his rifts out. Strong. 
Get Shockwave, now he portals away. Yeah, very good kiting here. He uses that soul, um, soul Burn as well, so he has the Sprint. Now here, I would... Okay, I, I'm not a particularly big fan of what he's done here. I, I like the Snare, very good Snare from him. Maybe could have done an Amplified Curse Snare onto him there for the 70% extra. But what he's done is he's done a very defensive move of Soul Ripping one Warrior when a Warrior doesn't have any cooldowns up and he's at 100% health. Now, in this composition you're playing, you're playing with a Death Knight who doesn't have a Mortal Strike effect. You could use Soul Rip offensively to try and close out the game, or you could use Soul Rip when both the Warriors are connecting onto you. But what we've done here is use it on only one target when he's not even really catching us because we did that really good snare on him earlier. Here we get an Amplify Curse of Weakness onto the Warrior. I like this a lot. It's a 20 second cooldown and there's no Dispel on their team, so he's pretty, pretty, doing this pretty much on cooldown, which is very, very good from him. And he gets a full fear onto the healer, that's very good too. And now here he's waddling towards his Warrior, where we could have just got an Immolate on the Warrior close to us first. Because uh, he had no problem available, so we could have just maximized our Immolate, so just maximize the damage on anyone really. So we, uh, we use a movement to get over here, and then we just get stunned. And now at this point we have Amplify Curse back, we have two Sacks of Shadow Burn, and we have two Con Flags, and we have an Instant Incinerate. And there's no Pommel. So what we should be doing here is getting an Immolate up, and then using Shadow Burn to buff that damage, then using our Instant Incinerate, and then Con Flag, and then Shadow Burn again into another Con Flag. Now that would close out the game, I think, if he does that rotation. Instead, we we don't cast, unfortunately. He doesn't have a pummel, so we should be casting here. We send out all of our instants first. And then we Rain of Fire again. This Rain of Fire, not too bad, because he is getting tunneled by a warrior, so I, I understand he wants to get his Rich of the Ruin up. So it's not horrendous to do. However, I think if he casted Immolate first in that rotation, he would have done a lot more damage if he um, timed everything up a little bit better. Here we go for a fear. Unfortunately, it's full DR. I really need to watch the DRs on the Priest this game. We've done this twice now, unfortunately. But he gets into a War Stomp, and he procs a Bane. And it looks like he might actually be able to kill here if he uses his uh, Shadow Burns. Let's see. The Shadow Burns come in, and he scores a kill on the Warrior. So, very good kiting this game. However, I would say try to be more aware of when you have those instant incinerate procs and also really need to make sure that we get those immolates up when they don't have pummel available. Alright, so we're two wins up, so I guess he doesn't want to change anything <laughs> going for that Void Walker again, which I'm not a big fan of. Oh, so we're playing Impish Instinct. Okay, that makes sense. I don't mind Impish Instinct. I think it's, it's a fairly strong talent and uh, when you're facing two melees, it's very good. But we should be looking to get that teleport shape right up or down in the room, as I said earlier. Or trying to make this gate go up. However, we're, we're very, very inclined to doing it here. And also the Reign of Fire, as I mentioned earlier, is a little bit too late. Does it when he's in combat already, which uh, doesn't allow us to get our shards back. So we're going to be starting this game with no shards. So he goes for this instant Amplified Curse of Weakness on the Warrior. This is a very good move. And then he throws out two Con Flags. Now, this is just wasting the talent we put into Conflag that makes our damage do more from Immolate and Incinerate, just by overlapping them completely. So I'm not a big fan of this. And also, when the melees aren't on us, we should be taking the time to cast instead of using our instant, because we can actually... we have all this room to do so when they're not on us, so we should be getting just Immolate out at this point. We go for all of our Rifts, and we get a Shadow Burn out, so that's also good. Now, here, okay. So he's going for Chaos Spots, he wants a burst. But as I said previously, he should have Immolator, because this will give us more damage from uh, Asher Remains. And also, while we're casting Chaos Bolt, it will be giving us Shard Fragments. However, what's going to happen now is he's going to Chaos Bolt twice, and he's just going to completely run out of Shards. He's not going to be able to press anything. Let's see, Chaos Bolt, Chaos Bolt, and now he's incinerating. But you see, he has to just stop. Because he doesn't have any shards, so now he goes for the Immolates now. Which unfortunately he has to do his maintenance after he's bursted. So instead of being able to just burst into burst into burst into burst, he's having to burst, burst, maintenance. So he actually loses a lot of pressure doing this. Okay, for a Chaos Bolt. This is a good Chaos Bolt, making sure we get two. Could have... Okay, we've Chaos Bolt a little bit later here. We need to 
try and keep our uh, Chaos Bolts and our Shadow Burns within the Madness window, so maybe a weak aura would be good for this to be able to track it, because I noticed you didn't do the Shadow Burn earlier either, because if you use these abilities within 5 seconds of each other, so you Shadow Burn, then within 5 seconds you Shadow Burn, it'll do more damage, and if you Chaos Bolt and then within 5 seconds you Chaos Bolt again, it's faster and there's more damage, so it makes it a lot easier to do. Like this one, this is, this is good. Get our Immolates back up. Get a Conflag, that's good. We teleport away, and then we start running away. Not too bad here. Here for another Immolate. A Fear onto the healer. Uh, he's doing the crowd control quite frequently, which I quite like. However, he should be looking for Curse of Tongues on the healer uh, when he's doing these fears, just for the extra crowd control that he can have. He's also doing a Soul Rip here. But you need to be aware that Soul Rip is only 20 yards, so you see it only applied to the Priest. Um, Soul Rip is kind of best used when you're in melee range, I would say, if they're going on you. Because, uh, yeah, as I said, I think both of the DPS just outrange it here, unfortunately. Go for a Chaos Bolt here, this is good. Into another Chaos Bolt, and then he can just spam out Chaos Bolts right now, because he has so many shards. So Shadow Fury into... Ah... Once again, we got a very, very DR fear here, unfortunately. But we do get the coil. Not too bad. I like this coil. They're sending out the shadow burns. I'm finished with the incinerates. These are pretty good globals. Getting the immolates back up. Very nice. Now, um, we should be looking to just try and use this amplified curse of weakness on the warrior again after this disarm ends. And maybe get a curse of tongues on the healer. And also, while the healer has holy ward up, we can just fear that off even though he's on full DR. Just go for some damage, get some Chaos Bolts out, this is good. They run over to you and Storm Bolt. Then you just throw out some instants. Uh, your Warrior's dying a little bit here. I would go for a Fear on the Death Knight, because your Warrior's in quite a bit of trouble. Or you could even Fear the Warrior. Oh my goodness, he's going very low. Okay, the Excitement Fear now. Oh, he's Fear the Healer! Okay, this is a very aggro play. Personally, I'd be Fearing the DPS. But uh, yeah, we go for the Fear on the Healer. War is at 3% health. That is, is insanity that he's not peeling here. 1%, 2%. Uh, he goes for no, he goes for, okay, he goes for a fear on the warrior. And oh. Oh, they managed to kill him before the guardian. Yeah. I'll definitely start peeling a little bit more early uh, in this game. Uh, a good thing you can do when you're facing warriors is just to fear them early on. And it's, they'll usually just auto berserker rage because they can just get out so freely, which will allow you to actually fear them when you need it. And it will generally stick. But this game was a bit better in the damage compartment, but I guess it's a bit easier because you're free casting. But we got the immolations up. And um, we did use the Curse of Weakness well, too. Alright, here comes the last round. I've already won three rounds. Let's we sacrifice the Void Walker again. As I said earlier, I'm not a huge fan to this. Misty was have to cast quite a bit, so he could get a lot of value out of Fell Hunter, but it seems to be his go to. And we, I don't think we're going to use the map. Let's, yeah, we get this gateway here, which I I'm, I don't love this. I really want to have the gateway going up. And we get the Rain of Fire as well in combat, so we don't generate the shards back. So this is, all, this is all things you can very easily fix. Having the gateway going up onto the platform upstairs, having the, the teleport a little bit further away, and maybe even just specking out of Rain of Fire and these sort of matchups where you're not going to get much value out of it. So here we gateway into the warrior. This was okay. This is very lucky that he gets gripped back here, and the warrior leaps away at the same time. This could have been uh, very dangerous here. We get a coil onto the DK. A few trinkets out. So we go for the infernals into the shadow fury. I like this little combo that he does. Then we should be looking for an immolate here, but the ice bounds out. So at this point, I would go for a fear onto the death knight just to get the kick out of the way and just cast immolate on him. But we choose to just go for the portals as well. So that's that's okay. I want to get those portals out early, the dimensional rifts. Here we teleport away. His healer's in fear, so he's just line of sighting. That's fine, but we could be using a rain of fire here, just since we are on full shards. We just want to send out our shadow burns as well, if possible. To get the soul rip onto the death knight, there's only one target, unfortunately, so it's, it's not going to get too much value. The DK is not going to solo you realistically. And we're still holding on to five shards, so we could have used this on rain of fire or. Shadow Burn, which we really should be doing. We get a Fear onto the healer, we get the Immolate up. We get the Chaos Spot, this is good. 
We faked the kick, actually, I think. We're going to call onto the healer, into a refit. This is a nice little sequence that he's done here. And then we go for the double con flag once again. We're, we're, I think we're putting Shadow Burn too low on the prior. Okay, we're using Shadow Burn now. Which is good. I'd like to see it a little bit earlier. I, I generally think that you should be keeping Shadow Burn pretty much on cooldown at the moment because it just does so much damage and you don't want to be sitting on five shards. So right now we're sitting very far away from the fight. Get the Immolate up. DK is running over to us. I'd be a little bit scared of being behind the pillar here, but maybe he can draw him away. Let's see what he goes for. He goes for the Pact, which I don't think he needs to do this Pact. He's very scared of Death Knights, but I, th I think Death Knights aren't that scary in the moment. So there's no need to tree immune him and soul rip him and Pacts. Only the DK. I think it's the Warriors the main problem. But we get this triple Shadow Fury here, which is very nice. Next up, he goes for Fear. Doesn't quite land it, but the and then he does land it, and then just gets instantly chinked, and he just poof, Warwick goes down to that. So this this game was uh, there's some very good kiting here, but I think it's just we have to realize how much damage certain classes do. He's really very scared of the Death Knight, who isn't the scariest uh, DPS in the game, so he can afford to get to cast more. And uh, I think another thing is we're very scared of getting kicked. Whereas, these kicks aren't very long anymore, so you can just cast Fear, get kicked, press Immolate. But, other than that, good game. Alright guys, that wraps up another VOD review. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and tell us what spec we should cover next. And while you're doing that, be sure to check out SkillCap.com to learn how you can gain 400 rating this season risk-free. As always though, we'd like to thank you all for watching, see you soon.